Welcome to Rockingham for round six of the 2004 series. Championship leader Stevie Hulshan finally got both feet on the top step of the podium in round five, meaning pole position this time. But as always, look out for Colin White, because it doesn't seem to matter whether that guy starts at the front of the pack or right at the very, very back. He always seems to end up with the leaders. Gentlemen, start your engines. Welcome to Dave the Thunder. Welcome to Rockingham and so far at least perfect weather conditions for round six of the Days of Thunder series, the NSPCC 180. Plenty of stories to be told up and down the pit lane as well. And Ben Collins has almost got a smile on his face and Rob Speak is back, so that's all good news. Well, meanwhile down in pit lane, Helen's got somebody with her, haven't you Helen? What you done? Burnt my face on a bonfire. Messing about? No, I was at work. I, was with <laughs> I wasn't messing about. What did you do then? Get too close? No, I lit it and I was too close. What with? Like, on the petrol. And it exploded in my face. So kids don't blow with fire. Honestly, this is what happens when you do. Seriously? Did it hinder your chances of racing this weekend? It could have done because I was laying in the hospital bed on uh, Wednesday. Um, praying that I'd be able to race. So, luckily I'm here. Tony, you confused me last time I spoke to you because you were in a new car and now you're in another new car. What's going on? Uh, yes, Helen, I have changed again. Yeah. Um, I'm now in a Pontiac, actually, with uh, HTML. I was in a Chevy with TalkSpeed. Um, TalkSpeed, a huge team. And uh, basically, I, I just felt a little out of place there. I, I like Why? A, I like a bit of personal, close stuff. And, it's, you know, it's, I'm the only guy in this team and it, it suits me. Well, I'm the only guy plus oh. hundreds of children, of course. But. Oh, yeah, you brought the family today. There's loads of them. I take it they're all yours. They are. Now you'll remember we have spoken to Sean Richardson a couple of times over this series, Sean of the Darkness car. I asked him where his fancy darkness suit was and he said, it's coming, it has arrived, we haven't seen it yet. Sean, where's your suit? <laughs> Man, that's rubbish! Oh, thank you. No, uh, right, talk me through it, what on earth? You can't drive in that. No, these, these, these actually come off. Oh, they're detachable. They're detachable, yeah. And the leg fluffers and as the well. Leg you look as well. like a Shire horse. I feel like a Shire horse. It kind of defeats the object, doesn't it? Because Justin from the darkness, his is all skin tight. It is, but yeah, but because of regulations, we can't have that tried. Actually, taking away the fluffy cuffs, it's, yeah. it's a lovely suit, isn't it? You must be chuffed with it. I'm very chuffed with it, yeah. I thought, best looking guy down the pit line, I've got to have the best shreds. So. The only thing is, though, if you get really irate with another driver and you go after him for a scrap, you're going to look stupid. Yeah, but he will see it coming, will he? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It's rubbish! Well, Sean Richardson needn't worry about the championship points at the moment. That's Stevie Hodgson's bailiwick. 35 points ahead of Colin White with John Stewart third ahead of Mark Proctor and Michael Burgess. Well, we're uh, just a few moments away from getting going and Helen's down there with Stevie. Stevie, this is your first time on pole as previous race winner. You must still be buzzing about the whole thing. Yeah, we're really buzzing about it and uh, I just hope this Monopoly talk speed car can stay up front again. Do you think you're going to stay there? Hey, if all goes well, we are. I mean, we had a good car in the first one, and pit stops go okay, and the guys drive sensibly behind me, we should be okay. Hi there, John. How you doing? Adam. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, they took them here then, sorry. Oh, right. Oh, your spotters, what were they saying to you? We've got three minutes to go. Oh, brilliant. We'll have a nice comfy little chat then. How's it going for you? All right, Fifth, that's all right. To, not too bad today. We're, we're happy with the car today. We was as quick as them first thing this morning, or quicker than them this morning, so we're really quite happy with the car. And at the previous event, the readers of Autosport awarded this man, number eight, Chris Cook, driver of the day. Chris, I have something for you. Fans of Autosport have awarded you driver of the day for rounds three and four. 
What would you like to say to those people who voted for you? Oh, it's just, um, it's just great. I mean, I never expected to, uh, you know, to win this. It's, um, it's fantastic. There you go. Now, I don't know where you're going to keep that because you've got a race to do in a minute. Do you want me to look after it for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that'll probably be best. We won't want that flying around in the car. Well done, Chris. Thanks. I was just hoping that guy's foot didn't slip off the clutch because we were standing right in front of him there. Oh dear me. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, no more. Well, plenty of fun for free faller, but now the serious business. 60 laps of the Rockingham banked circuit. Seven degrees of banking means carrying the speed through the corners at 170 mile an hour down the straights. And here they come towards us, Stevie Hansen and Colin White on the front row followed by John Mickle and Ollie Playel on row two. And on row three, John Stewart and Tony King in good shape. Ben Collins up to row four after starting at the back last time. Rob Speak alongside. Mark Willis and Sean Richardson on five. Chris Cook and Michael Verge's teammates on row six. And John John Higgins will line up with his teammate Steve Hobday on row seven. Ahead of Peter Folding and Mark Proctor. Skid Carrera and Mike Luck will line up on row nine. And row 10, Anthony Swan, home hero, and Phil Weaver. And Chris Robinson and Malcolm Klein on row 11. The pace car lights are off, which means we are about to get set for 60 laps of racing. And there you can see our onboard cameras, Mark Proctor, Rob Speak, and Ben Collins carrying three of our cameras. Now, those are what the drivers see. This week, too, we'll be able to home in on what the drivers hear, because we'll be listening in to their spotters as they go racing. And it's green, green, green from Big Mac up on the gantry. The round six of the Data Thunder Series for 2004 is underway. And Stevie Hodgson will go double wide in turn one with Colin White on the outside. Stay on it, 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 stay on it. Well, plenty of encouragement there from Sean Dogrell. That's the spotter for Colin White in the number 78 car. And he needs to stay on it because Stevie Hodgson is holding that tighter inside racing line. Maybe slightly slower as a result, though, because Colin White can get the slingshot now up into turn four. But Stevie Hodgson stays too wide. Colin White's having to stay up on the wide side of the track. Stevie Hodgson, through turn four, could make his bid for the lead here. Yeah, he's trying very hard, isn't he? But Stevie will hold on surely as they come round through turn one a second time. And John Mickle is closing in on Hodgson. So Hodgson has to keep his eyes and ears open. Outside. 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 That's the voice of Jason Matmanara. He's the spotter for Stevie Hodgson in that 24 car. Well, a big contrast in styles between the two spotters, but look at this. On the limit, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Stevie Hodgson still stays. And look at Ollie Pell making his move down the inside of John Mickle for third. Meanwhile, Stevie Hodgson gets himself up into the order. There it is, one-two across the line. Hodgson and White, Ollie Playle up into third, and Ben Collins pushing hard in the pack. Yeah, Collins is trying to cut his way through the traffic, Steve, isn't he? But what a move by Ollie Playle there. Picks up a position. Car uh, high, high, car uh, high. Car high, that's the words from Ben Collins, as you see. Just makes it past Tony King there, the 17 car back of spots. And the 85 car there of Malcolm Klein rolls into pit lane. Problem there with bodywork touching the tyres after his accident in the previous race. Meanwhile, this is the battle for seventh place. Ben Collins versus Michael Verges, two men who had high hopes of the championship, but they've been having a mid-season lull. Meanwhile, it is this man, Stevie Hodgson, winner of round five of the championship. Is he going to win round six? Not if Colin White has anything to do with it. No, that's what I was just thinking, Steve. Colin White is absolutely on a mission. He knows he has a great opportunity here with Ben Collins. Starting as he has done further back on the grid, Colin White takes the low line from Stevie Hodgson, not surely double wide again. No, not this time. He'll go through surely. Well, Colin White... Oh, oh and three wide as Colin White gets jumped by Ollie Playle. What a fantastic piece of driving by the youngest man in the Days of Thunder series. Just 19 years old, Ollie Playle in the Liberty X car takes the race lead from Stevie Hodgson and Colin White as they now fight for the scraps in second place. It's Colin White in second, Stevie Hodgson third, John Mickle fourth, John Stewart having a brilliant race up into fifth place on the tail of Mickle. Yeah, brilliant stuff it is all the way throughout the field as Malcolm Klein down in front of us leads uh, pit road, but also fighting it out for a hard fourth eighth position. Here comes Tony King in the HTML 17 going side by side with the darkness resplendent in his new suit. 
and the darkness car of Sean Richardson has to give way. Kingy moves up a spot. And John Stewart at the moment, he's been keeping his cool, keeping his quiet through this season, but has built an all-new car in just eight weeks because they were disappointed with the performance of the previous 75. And boy, oh boy, he may be the oldest man in Days of Thunder racing, 50-something years old, but this man in the 75 Ford Taurus can't half race. He can a bit, and he's got John Mickle on the outside of him, and he's no slouch either. But he did give him room, and they gave each other space to make the move stick, and the crowd up here absolutely on their feet as we've got double wide racing right the way throughout the field, particularly here for this second place battle. Give it up to Ollie Plow, as you said, Steve. He's going away from them. Well, Colin and White may have the advantage at the moment, but just look at the gap that Ollie Plow is opening up ahead of these two. But, you know, bad news, I think. We've got some clouds looming over the track there. If it starts to rain, the cars will slow under the yellow flags and that gap could be closed right up again. Meanwhile, Stevie Hodgson is trying to do it under green flag racing. Gets a jump on Colin White this time. Brilliant stuff all the way around the outside. Unless Colin White has a problem. I think Colin White has got a problem. Stevie's quick, but he's not that quick to go by Colin White and leave him standing. But Stevie's on a mission and look at this. This is the view from Rob Speak's car as we come into turn four. Closing in on Michael Burgess and spatters on the rain. Look at the rain on the screen. That is going to be a real trick for these drivers to cope with that. Now, these cars are on slick tyres. You don't race in the rain on a banked oval track. John Stewart gets the jump on Colin White. And maybe Colin White's backed off because he can see those flecks of rain. But the other guys are staying hard on it. Now, if the cars keep running on the track, there's just a few spits in the air at the moment. If the cars stay on the track, we'll keep the track dry, and we should be able to keep racing for the checkered flag. Yeah, just on that uh, point you mentioned, Steve, Colin White does set his car up much looser. That's the uh, lot from Ollie Plale's crew. They're desperate. Ollie will be on the radio at the moment, screaming to race control that it's raining. There's some adjustments going on. Oh, my goodness me, look at this. Everybody wants to be fourth, it seems. Led by Colin White. We're in the thick of it here with Rob Speak, who gives a little tap. That won't help him. Well, that's fantastic racing. And look at Michael Burgess trying to get the inside as well as Rob Speed there with, Mike, with Mark Willis. Don't forget, in just his second days of Thunder Race, was on pole position for his first. Very, very quick, but he's learning a lot about motor racing at this sort of speed. Meanwhile, Rob Speak now rockets up on the back of Colin White and John Mickle. Michael Burgess is the man at the tail end of that train as well, trying to find his way through. The pit stop window begins this lap around. Who's going to dive into the pit lane first? That is the question. Burgess makes his lunge down the inside. Oh, and Burgess gets his tail sliding just a little bit there and goes all the way. Michael Burgess, round he goes and into the wall. Wreck in front, back it down, wreck in front. Well, that is uncharacteristic for Michael Burgess just as we were getting to the pit stop window. Let's just take a look at this. Down the inside of Mark Willis. I don't think there's any contact here, Steve. I just think Virgis gets the back end sliding away. Yeah, it just gets away from him. Well, he was trying to stay down on that low line, but bang, he goes into the wall. Well, a really dramatic end to the race for the Flying Dutchman, Michael Virgis. Backwards into the wall at turn four. And just look at the marks on the wall. Many of the cars have been in there before. Michael Virgis is one of them. Well, we're still under caution here. The pits have been closed by the race officials. Michael Burgess into the wall there on turn four. Um, well, obviously all the guys are going to have to come in. Now, I suppose there'll be a decision made whether they go back out again because the rain is getting a little bit heavier. Maybe that's the reason Michael's gone into the wall. We'll take a commercial break. We'll have the answers when we come back. See you in a couple of minutes. to part two as you can see the crash has been cleared from the corner and the rain has cleared as well so all the cars are staying out they were going to come in they're staying out under the pace car we're going to be racing again but then the guys are going to come in immediately for the pit stop so we'll get back to the action yeah they're on the way to your hell and here they come led by race leader ollie player who made an awesome move to go three wide and take the lead but now it's about getting those two outside tires off two fresh ones on and getting back out there and racing that's right, and there's been plenty of rivalry between this pit, pit crew, the one of Stevie Hodgson, that of Ollie Player, and that of John Mickle. Let's see who is going to perform the best here. Two men over on the air wrenches, one man on the trolley jack, and of course five wheel nuts per wheel. This is not Formula One. And, well, there is a big fishtail from the 24 car, Stevie Hodgson. Mickle gets away, though, fastest of all. What a pit crew he's got, but it's Ollie Player still out in front. 
Well, the West Tech boys did an awesome job there. Plough came in quickly, got out quickly. That was the most important thing. And the West Tech boys, led by Brian Look, did a great job. With all the weather going on, we didn't know whether it was going to be red flagged or not, so we just had to give it our all. And uh, we did it. Got out in front again. So I hope you'd stay there till the end. Well, the red flag not being shown, thankfully, to stop the race. The car's running under the caution. And here we can see Michael Verges and the 25 car of Mark Willis. And Verges, maybe, you know, I don't think it was a case of him making any contact at all there. It was just pushing too hard, too tight down into that corner. Yeah, I think you're right, Steve. Well, we've all changed our tyres and we're ready to go again. Ollie Plough will pick up the green flag with John Mickle right on his rear bumper. And behind there, Mark Proctor sees Ben Collins going double wide with Colin White, who's got problems. Well, Colin White only has minor problems in contrast to Tony King, who's limping along on the pit lane there and uh, staying down out of everybody's way. We're going to stay on green flags because at the head of the order, it's Ollie Plough still flying ahead of Stevie Hodgson. John Mickle there, still pushing hard. And as you say, Colin White sliding backwards in the pack. Yeah, Stevie Hodgson got around John Mickle at the restart there and uh, managed to pick off that second place. So he's demoted his teammate back to third. But Playl has the advantage at the moment. And fourth place, John Stewart with Mark Willis, the super rookie, I think you called him, Steve, back in fifth. And what a great battle this is. All the cars really equally matched. Now, Ollie Player really is going to have to push. And Ollie Player starts to back off. And Stevie Hodgson's holding station behind him. Problems round the further round the track. We have got a spin in forward. We have got a spin in forward. Yeah, Skid Carrera is the guy who's spun around. That's the reason for this caution flag on lap 41. So 19 laps remaining. Oh, dear. That looks like a heavy hit. Well, it's a heavy hit and he's in exactly the same place as Michael Burgess. And I'm wondering if there's a problem with the track down there. Let's find out. Bob Crew Chief for the 11 car, you must have had a pretty good view of what happened. Yeah, we did, yeah. We, he's come into turn four a bit, up, got up close. I think he's lifted. When you lift the back end, locks up and around, she's gone. There you go. Well, a couple of people have said exactly the same place that Michael Burgess has just gone off. Is yeah. there still, you know, a bit of debris there? Was he caught up? Is the no, track we still was, wet? We was down low when he went, so I imagine the track's pretty green. Obviously, the tyres are running a bit cold. He's a new boy. Well, that's a very honest opinion from Bob Becky. We'll get Skid Carrera back, I'm sure, again, but we go green, and Ollie Blair will get us across the line with 12 laps to go. John Stewart will look to the inside of Mickle, but Mickle says, oh, you're coming through there, boy. Well, I tell you what, this is pretty good, isn't it? Because we've got three of the most experienced drivers, Ollie Playl, the young rookie. This time, Stevie Hodgson gets a run in, and I was just about to say, can Ollie Playl hang on? Well, I'm still going to say it because he is not giving way to Stevie Hodgson one little bit. And just look behind him because John Mickle and John Stewart are queuing up as well, trying to follow Stevie Hodgson down. And just look at John Stewart. He goes too wide for third place. Meanwhile, it is still too wide with Ollie Pale and Stevie Hodgson driving their hearts out. Absolutely brilliant. I'll tell you what, John Stewart really did save John Mickle there. John Stewart carried a huge amount of speed into Turn 4. And Mickle had the line and Stewart backed off. But look at them. Mickle now has got the momentum as Ollie Playle just has to inch off. Stevie Hodgson will pick up the confirmed lead. But I'll tell you what, he's not giving it up. Tenacious little so-and-so he is. He's going double wide again through turn three. Oh, and just look at this. Just inches apart. And why, oh boy, oh. three wide. I don't think I've ever seen that through turn four at Rockham. Ollie Playle's car gets a slide on. He's had to back off. And the moment you lift off the gas here, your history. He's down into third, fourth, fifth place. And now John Stewart will come from fourth to take the lead. What a masterful piece of opportunism from John Stewart. And Ollie Plough finds himself back in, like you say, Steve, fourth or fifth place. Give a shout to Sean Richardson as well in the two car, who's now got Plough double Y with him. Plough wants a podium spot. You know, these podium places are for grabs because any one of these guys could be on the podium. In fact, still, any one of these guys could be at the race win. It's John Stewart, though, starting to run away with this, with John Mickle really piling the pressure on. Stevie Hodgson has Sean Richardson around his outside, and I think now Stevie Hodgson's lost momentum. It's the two red cars at the head of the order. And number 75, John Stewart, 
Well, there's sadly a retirement for John John Higgins, but just look at John Stewart's pit crew. For the first time ever, they have got a sniff of victory, but Ollie Pale's starting to come back. But can he get on terms with John Mickle? He's trying his hardest, and these two have obviously had their moments as well. So it could be all to play for here. But out front, look at John Stewart. His pit, pit crew are absolutely pacing up and down the concrete. But here comes Mickle on a charge. Surely Ollie Pale can't get around the outside, can he? White flag. White flag shows one lap to go, one and a half miles of Rockingham. Any one of these three drivers, I reckon, could still be seeing the checkered flag. At the moment, though, it's John Stewart opens up a bit of airspace as John Mickle defends from Ollie Pale. And it's the 75 car down through turn two to turn, turn three. Is John Stewart going to see the checkered flag for the first time in Days of Thunder? Well, we can't watch, can we? John Mickle will try and get a run out of turn three. But has he got enough momentum? That's going to be key as they come around into turn four. Mickle will look to try and swoop low and then sweep out to the high line. The checkered flag is in hand. John Stewart is going to take the Virgin Experience's car to victory lane. Unbelievable stuff. And look at them in pit road going mental. And not just in pit road, in the grandstands too. That is one very popular victory. John Stewart has been around since the very start of Days of Thunder. That's his first ever race win. Ahead of John Mickle, Ollie Pale, Stevie Hodgson and Sean Richardson. Wow, what a race. Yeah, we was, uh, I, I was happy with it. I would have been happy with second, but it all come together and we had a... First, so. Fantastic, when you went past us, you were third, when you came round the corner, you were leading. Yeah. Where did the gap open up? It was tighter, I could get in lower than them and that's what did it. I just actually had the grip on the inside, so I made the grip work. I'm ever so pleased for John Stewart. He's been here since 2001, started when we did, and he deserves a win. And I'm taking my hat off to him, he's driving blinder. Did you not think you were going to win that race at one point though? I thought I was going to win it, but I also thought I was going to slam the wall in turn four when we went three wide and my car went sideways. But at least we're, through, we're finished and fourth and a third, you can't be happy with that. And you were the first over to shake John's hand as well. I was. He drove an absolute fantastic race. He's done well all weekend. Praise to the old boy. Well, praise the old boy who moves up to second in the championship. 40 points behind Stevie Hodgson, but 15 points ahead of third place Colin White. Mark Proctor in fourth, Ben Collins on a recovery drive up to fifth ahead of Michael Verges. And the battle is renewed at Rockingham on Sunday, 1st of August. And as always, first Sunday in the month is Days of Thunder. And it's also music weekend as well. Big Brothers will be with us along with Javine. They'll all be here on the Smash Hit stage. And to win a VIP trip here, then to see Big Brothers and Javine, just to answer the question. My favourite things was a hit for Big Brothers, but which musical has a song of the same title? Is it A Sound of Music, B Grease or C Chicago? There's the number to call. Get on the phone now. But meanwhile, on the top step of the podium, for the first time in Days of Thunder, John Stewart, a very, very popular winner. Well, that just about wraps up another amazing day here at Rockingham. John Stewart taking his first ever win with some spectacular driving. And the entertainment doesn't stop there either. Over on the Smash It stage now, Jamelia's performing, Girls are Louder on, Peter Andre, the cheeky girls, to name but a few. But from us, that's it. We'll see you again in August, but we do it all over again. From everybody here at Rockingham, bye-bye.